Welcome and thanks for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Guman Singh. A tragic 911 call was made around 3 a.m. on Saturday morning on St. Croix. Firefighters were dispatched to the Fritz Loetz Lagoon housing community in Frederickstead, where six unattended children were rescued from the burning building. News 2's Shanika Robinson has more. At approximately 3 a.m. on Saturday morning, four units from Frederickstead and Grove Fire Station were dispatched to a structural fire at the Fritz Lowetz Lagoon housing community. Firefighters, upon arrival, absorbed smoke and flames coming from a second-story apartment and encountered six children who had been rescued from the burning apartment. Firefighters extinguished and stopped the spread of the fire within minutes. All of the children, ranging from ages 3 to 14, suffered minor burns, according to police, and one five-year-old had burns on 15 to 20 percent of his body and was flown off island for his treatment. Police said the 14-year-old assisted three of the minors from the apartment building and the 11-year-old girl grabbed two of the younger victims, a four-year-old and a five-year-old boy, and led them to safety. The 14-year-old boy used a hammer to break the louvers open while standing on the shoulders of one of the other men and pulling the younger victim through the window and eased them down to one of the men who caught him down below. Other members of the community also played a major role in saving the lives of the children. Giovanni Roach, who absorbed the fire and screamed out, to Gary Hendrickson heard the commotion along with Ray Bega Fax, was providing assistance and comfort to the other victims and the rescuers. An individual by the name of Shahili Wellington Pennyfeather risked his life by entering the apartment and rescued a five-year-old boy that saved his life. According to the police statement, the two mothers of the children were not in the apartment at the time of the fire. Detectives from the Criminal Investigation Bureau are investigating the incident along with members of the VI Fire Services. As of Sunday, no arrest has been made and this case will remain under active investigation. Shiniqua Robinson, News 2. The News 2 will keep you updated. Fire Chief Angel Torres would like to thank the, those who assisted for their heroic acts in saving the victims. The VI Police Department is reminding motorists that they may encounter DUI checkpoints throughout the territory from now through Labor Day. Police say offenders will be ticketed and fined in addition to other penalties. Driving over the speed limit, aggressive driving, including cutting in and out of traffic, using the cell phone without an earpiece, texting while driving and not obeying posted traffic signs are all in effect to protect the public. Violating these laws can result in the injury or death of another person or yourself. If you are arrested for a DUI, there is a great possibility that your infraction will be forwarded to the local media. So if you don't want that added notoriety, if you are out drinking with friends, have a designated driver or use an alternate method. Meanwhile, two motorists were arrested for driving under the influence of alcohol in St. Croix this weekend. Louis E. Benitez, age 52, was arrested on August 17th around 1.30 a.m. and charged. Police said Benitez was driving near Paradise Mills when he was involved in a single car collision. Traffic enforcement officers administered a field sobriety test and breathalyzer, which indicated that he was above the legal limit for alcohol consumption. He was arrested and placed on a $1,000 bail. Also on August 17th, 13-year-old, 36-year-old rather, Danielle Willis was arrested after police observed him driving in the wrong lane of traffic near the Estate Peters Rest dump site. Police said Willis did not have his driver's license in his possession and that the tests indicated that he was intoxicated. He was placed on a $1,000 bail. Well, a fatal hit-and-run accident that occurred on August 18th at around 5 a.m. has left police seeking the driver of a black or dark-colored Suzuki Vitara, Grand Vitara, or sidekick, which left the scene of the accident. The victim, who has, a, has been identified as Naldine Foster, was walking with her four-year-old grandson in Christiansted on the North Shore Road in the area of the doctor's offices when she was struck by a vehicle and died at the scene. The victim, the vehicle, will have damages to the front end and all body shops and car repair businesses are asked to call police upon seeing a vehicle that fits this description. Governor DeYoung has called, has called the Senate into a special session on Tuesday as we reported to act on the following bills. He proposes the first to authorize the issuance of VI Public Finance Authority Revenue Refunding Bonds Series 2013 for cash flow relief in fiscal year 2014. The second to finance a $13.6 million settlement agreement with the IRS in connection with the audit of more than $219 million bond issued by the PFA in 2006 
and third, to appropriate $5 million to the VI Department of Justice to fund the government's cost to fight Hovenza in a looming legal battle. And tune into News 2, we'll have more on that. The Senate Committee on Homeland Security, Justice and Public Safety met Monday to consider several bills. One of those was to establish the Computer Crimes Act of 2013. The legislation defines computer-related and other cyber crimes and establishes the penalties associated with those type of crimes. Bill sponsor Senator Diane Capehart said she will use the input from all of Monday's testifiers to amend the bill to make it stronger. We all have children, we have, um, we have elderly people that we have to protect. There's no local laws here in the territory. I understand there's federal laws, but I'm just trying to set foundation for the people of the Virgin Islands because times are changing and we need to be able to protect our own. Um, and it's very scary when you see how people are actually abusing the computers, the internet, the iPhones, and um, we have to be able to protect ourselves not only on the streets, but um, from your very home on the computers. The St. Croix Educational Complex will offer a four-year aviation program starting in September. Now, while the logistics haven't been ironed out, but an aviation consultant met with education officials and an advisory panel to talk about designing that program. News News' Erica Parsons has more. I think we're going to start when school opens and we're going to implement the program in stages. Education officials are working towards establishing an aviation academy program at the St. Croix Educational Complex. An aviation consultant met with a local advisory panel to talk about what they need to build the program. We want to help the school system here build a type tier, top tier program that will give your kids the opportunity to branch out of the island into occupations and career op opportunities that will basically change the economic outlook of their families for generations to follow. By Providing these options, then they have the opportunity to decide what direction they want to go in. And exposure is very, very important for our students. We want to focus on two areas. One is actually flying the plane, being a pilot. The other is AMP, which is the mechanic side of it. The four-year program will be developed in stages, but once finalized, it will lead to careers in and out of aviation, as well as industry certifications. Pretty much any occupation they could possibly want to get into is directly or indirectly tied into aviation. So if you're somebody that's interested in finance and you're only thinking about it in terms of banking, it surprises a lot of people to find out that airlines have finance arms and aviation corporations have finance arms. At the end, what they can receive, not only just receive private aircraft license, but if those who choose to go the maintenance route, uh, they would actually have an ANP license, which is an airframes and power plants license to repair aircraft. Officials don't have an exact price tag for the program, but they expect funding to come from the Department of Education, the Career and Technical Education Board, and some public-private partnerships. It's a program all the stakeholders say they're prepared to support for the students to see it finally get off the ground. I will do whatever I can to make sure that this is what, not one of those programs that stay in committee or die in committee um, because we have a lot of good ideas that, that, that are really put forward, a lot of good programs. We have the basic building blocks for this program in place. We just need to make sure that we connect the dots and put everything together and um, we leverage as many of the, of the corporate, public and private partnerships that we can and this would be a very good win-win for all of us within this community. Erica Parsons, News 2. We'll turn our attention overseas. The death toll in Egypt is nearing 1,000 in the ongoing military crackdown on supporters of ousted President Mohamed Morsi. The Obama administration is under pressure to do more to stop the violence. Tara Mergener has the latest from the White House. Islamic militants executed 25 Egyptian policemen in the Sinai Peninsula on Monday. The ambush came one day after government security forces killed at least 36 prisoners in their custody. The death toll is approaching 1,000 from a week of violence that began when security forces cracked down on supporters of ousted President Mohamed Morsi. U.S. officials have repeatedly urged restraint. There are a number of actions that have been taken by the interim government that have aroused the concern of people in the United States and people all around the world. 
On Monday, Egyptian tanks blocked the roads to Tahrir Square, and military leaders are enforcing a month-long curfew in a bid to curb the unrest. The Obama administration is under pressure from some lawmakers to suspend aid to Egypt, including $1.3 billion in annual military assistance. The White House says it continues to evaluate the situation, and its review will focus on what's in the best interest of U.S. national security. The Pentagon has canceled a joint military exercise and halted a planned shipment of F-16s. We're reviewing all aspects of our relationship. Former Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak, who was ousted from power in 2011 and charged with killing hundreds of protesters, could be released from custody this week, increasing tension in an already volatile situation. Tara Mergener for CBS News, the White House. And keeping our eye on the economy, the job market may be slowly improving, but that didn't stop hundreds of people hunting for work from spending the night camped out on a New York City street. Some people lined up days in advance for a chance to get into a coveted Carpenters union training program. 750 spots are available. Once working, a union member can earn as much as $99 an hour with benefits. This is the New York Stock Exchange with Scotiabank Stock Market Watch. The Dow, Nasdaq, S&P all down. The Dow 17, Nasdaq 13, S&P 9. Coming up on News 2, in front of a nearly sold out crowd at Antilles Schools, Mark C. Marine Center Saturday, 340 boxing, John Jackson, Julius Jackson, and Samuel Rogers dominated in the boxing in Paradise B.I. ring hosting big wins, and it was a heartfelt moment also when Mr. Griffith's son presented 340 Boxing with Emil Griffith's fighting robe and gloves. That's coming up in sports. Chocolate and coffee-flavored chili? This is only one of the many chili varieties at Brewers Beach in St. Thomas where chili lovers from near and far converged on Sunday for one of the biggest cook-off events in the Virgin Islands. News 2's April Knight has more. Even a thunderstorm couldn't beat the heat at Brewers Bay here in St. Thomas as thousands of people still came out for the 29th annual Texas Society Chili Cook-Off. The chili cooks set up shop as early as 6 a.m. and got started on hours of simmering and stirring, hoping to get that perfect blend. Cooks competed for different categories. Veggie, meat, large show, small show. There's also the Cassio Chili Appreciation Society category where off-islanders can join and have their recipe subjected to a rigorous taste test. The showmanship category where different stalls get dressed up to attract customers and cooks try all sorts of gimmicks to sell out their samples. Betsy Stahl has won the showmanship category eight years in a row. We just have such a gas doing it, all the decorating and I have a great Group of people. Chili cup in one hand and cold drink in the other, people find other forms of entertainment, dancing to the live music or taking on the different games. And while good chili is in the tongue of the beholder, there has to be winners. Texan Ron Baker bagged first place in the Cassie category, St. Thomas's own Lori Abbott swan second, and a chance to represent the VI in the International Cassie Championship. Local beef first place went to Rick Weaver, while local vegetarian first place went to June Wyatt Smith. Betsy won the large showmanship category again for the ninth year in a row, while Pinups in Paradise won small showmanship. At the end of the day, cook-off organizers remind everyone of the heart of the annual chili cook-off. Chili cook-off is really about making money for local charities. They go to Family Resource Center, Queen the Louise Queen Home, dial a ride. A really fun event that raises money for a good cause. Bringing you this year's chili cook-off, I'm April Knight for News 2. The Texas Society of the Virgin Islands, which spearheads the annual chili cook-off on St. Thomas, directs all proceeds to local charities. Well, you don't want to miss Bizarre Foods America with Andrew Zimmern tonight. St. Croix is in the spotlight. The episode will feature the Big Island. Zimmern was in St. Croix for 12 days in January to shoot VI Food and Culture. The episode, titled St. Croix USVI, Bulls Feet in Paradise, will air at 9 p.m. on the Travel Channel. Zimmern, who is a chef and culinary explorer, says he got a true taste of Crucian culture. The show will re-air multiple times in case you miss it. Please pardon and thank you. How important are manners and good etiquette? Well, here are the graduates of the Summer Etiquette and Leadership Institute. They talked about what they learned, the students, and how those skills can benefit them in the future. 
A ceremonial reception was held at the Twisted Cork Cafe in Frenchtown, St. Thomas, where the young ladies were presented with their certificates. The ladies had the opportunity also to show off the dining skills they learned, in addition to public speaking. What I really want, if I really want to compliment you to hear it, is to meet you maybe a month from now, two months from now, and tell me that Justinia is practicing her etiquette, or Ms. McGrath is practicing her confident leadership voice. That, to me, would show that the program is worth it. Don't just think because you're graduating, now you're going to get a certificate in the field, and that's it. Actually, the race has just begun. Because once you've been exposed, you therefore have a responsibility to exercise that. And congratulations to all the graduates, and they are Kelly Neptune, Jessenia Lloyd, Tiffany Weekly, Deanna Hunt, Radiance Peets, Sharissa Joseph, Yasmin McGrath, Linnell Amy, Anjali James, Sherna Williams. Congratulations once again. Now be sure to tune in to News 2 later this week. We'll have more on the Etiquette Leadership Institute. Well, in addition to its centennial and its 20th anniversary as a locally owned company, the West Indian Company observes this month the first anniversary of its centennial concerts. A one-year musical anniversary will be held from 5.30 to 9.30 p.m. on Tuesday, August 20th at the West Indian Company dock. The Superior Court Rising Stars Youth Steel Orchestra will kick off the evening's entertainment, followed by an all-star lineup of local musical luminaries, Kai Richardson on trumpet, Tabari Lake on bass, Roan Cricky on piano, and Akil Brady on piano. The musicians will accompany vocalists Pedrito Bupsi Robles, Dennis Fret, Eric Provost, Jeanette Reimer, and Lorna Freeman. We'll stick around. Your news to AccuWeather forecast is coming up next.